Hey guys, welcome back to another video in this channel. Today we're going to be covering one of the new features inside of ZBrush. Um, now, uh, before we move on, I want to thank you everyone for the for the get well uh, wishes. I'm not that sick particularly. I do have a little bit of uh, a throat, uh, like uh, discomfort, um, a little bit of overall tiredness and stuff, but not super bad. We're still waiting on the COVID results to see if it's actually COVID or not. Uh, we did like the full test it takes about like 24 hours to get so uh, should be in the next couple of hours we'll get the result uh hopefully it's not covid uh but it, it's still uh, like a very strong flu my wife and kid they're they're resting right now so don't worry about that my my mom uh, grandma is taking care of them so i i got a little bit of time to to do this for you guys so uh today we're going to be talking about bass relief which is one of the new tools inside of seabrush and it's super simple it actually doesn't have a lot of uh, like stuff or sliders to work with uh, but it's really, really cool. And bas relief is this technique that has been present in humanity for <laughs> millennia. And uh, it's when you sculpt something on a flat surface, like a coin, like a temple wall, like uh, anything, right? And uh, trying to do this sort of thing like manually before this bas relief tool was actually quite uh, like difficult. I want to show you real quick. I actually did this. Uh, let me see if I have it right here. Give me just one second. Oh, God. Yeah, so um, for my for my campaign, you know, uh, you know, you guys know that I play. Sorry. <laughs> oh my god, you guys know I play Dungeons and Dragons. So for uh, a a like final part of the campaign, like last year, I did this uh, coins. Let me see if I can focus them for you. And I actually used or, or tried to do something similar. Hopefully, like at that specific time, we we didn't have the the bash relief tool, so I had to like find a way to do it and uh it was a little bit complicated so um i'm gonna open the ogre that i showed you guys yesterday this guy right here that's another material and it's super super simple so i'm just gonna go here into subtool i'm gonna append a new cylinder and let's imagine that we're doing like some orcs kind of like coins right like maybe this is like the the coin from an orc empire and this guy's like a super well-known orc and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to position this cylinder where I want the projection to be placed, which in this case would be something like this, right? Like probably about there, I think works nicely. So I'm going to make the coin a little bit bigger because I want to show you a couple of other uh, uh, tips and techniques here. So what I'm going to do here is let me isolate this thing real quick, the little coin. And as you can see right now, if I turn on polyframes, everything is a single polyframe. So I'm actually going to... Um, like hide everything, control W to, to polygroup. So now we have two different polygroups. And then I'm gonna go into Q mesh, or sorry, uh, C, C modeler. So BCM is the shortcut. And I'm gonna click here Q mesh, and we're gonna Q mesh polygroup all. So I'm gonna create like the border of the element. Actually, I wanna do an inset first on polygroup all. There we go. So that's gonna be like the border of the, of the coin. And then Q mesh. And let's push this in. There we go. And the reason I want to do this is just I want to have that nice little border. We could even bevel this. Let's bevel. I'm going to position my mouse here. We're going to bevel. These are not new tools. These have been in Seabridge for a long time now. Uh, it's just like quick, some quick like uh, modeling here. Now, uh, for this tool or for this technique to work nicely, uh, we definitely need more geometry. So I'm going to go into Dynamesh and I'm going to keep my groups and hit Dynamesh. As you can see, that's not enough. So let's turn on Polish and let's bring this resolution to like 600. And say dynamic. So that's better. As you can see, it's not it's not bad. It's not like super high, but it should be good enough. And uh, it's super simple. Again, the bass relief thing. It's super super simple. You're just gonna select the tool to where the bass relief is gonna be projected, and every single tool that you have turned on at this point will be created into this sort of like bass relief. So what happened here, from what I was able to gather from the documentation, is that Seabrush will will create an alpha. Um, based on the subtool and the direction at which your camera is facing currently, and based on that direction and that like um, orientation, you're gonna project that into the object. So it creates the alpha and projects it automatically. So I'm gonna go down here into the subtool menu, and it's right here: project bass relief. So there's a couple of things: a relief repeat count, relief step tolerance, relief contrast, relief blur radius. Um, relief repeat count is kind of like the accuracy, how accurate you want this to be. Of course, if you increase the numbers, it should be a little bit more accurate. It will take a little bit longer. 
Relief Stat Tolerance, again, helps with the quality overall. Relief Contrast, I found that this one's really good. There is a note on the documentation that says do not push it all the way to one because you're going to get like some weird stuff. And then Relief Blur Radius, it blurs certain details. So if you have like a very hard surfacey edge and you see a little bit of anti-aliasing or aliasing, uh, this one is, is good for now and it will, it will help you with anti-aliasing. And uh, yeah, I mean, you just press Project Pass Relief, wait for this to finish, and there we go. <laughs> like, just like that, you have, of course, to select the tool that you're working with, which is this coin right here. And as you can see now, the coin has the relief of my character. Now, what can I do here to, to make this a little bit better? Well, of course, I can just, like, mask this out so that only this part is selected. Project Pass Relief. And now, as you can see, only the that border specifically got a project. Now, one issue that I, I did found, and I was looking at options, and there's actually a little bit of a note there that says how to fix this. Uh, you can actually like have this thing like really, really far away. Like it really doesn't matter because these are like orthographic views. So again, project mass relief, and you're gonna see that boom, we have our work right there. So let's go here, uh, mask this, invert the mask, and move this thing. I get project pass relief. And you can see we get that very nice work. So pretty much everything that we have, like the, the depth and everything, it's looking very, very, very nicely. And uh, uh, the thing that you're going to be using right now, this is the default uh, default uh, like interface for the for the new CBrush. Uh, there's this one that's called Adjust Last. It's, uh, it's on a stroke. So in the stroke, you're going to have this slider, which is Adjust Last. And it's super, super, super handy. I think I'm going to be using this one quite a bit, not only for this one. It's not new. But it's the first time that I'm actually like using it quite a bit. So uh, by moving the adjust last, oh, I'm sounding all <laughs> congested. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so I'm gonna hit the adjust last, and if I move this down, you can see that I'm gonna be able to control how how intense or not I want that uh, bass relief to be projected. And I mean, again, that's pretty much it. Like. Of course, you can come back here, do a little bit more uh, sculpting, like fix things. Like if I do Dynamesh, of course, you can see that uh, we lose some of the detail. But again, it, this is just like projecting everything that we have. And as we mentioned, or as I mentioned before, this is based on uh, actual like uh, direction of your object. So if I were to grab my coin here, and let's say I were to rotate it like this, and I want like a three-quarter view of my orc like this, you can do that. It's just a matter of... Again, masking that, invert mask, and then project bass relief. And whatever you have on your camera, boom, that's what's going to get, like, uh, like literally plastered on the object. So as you can see here, we got that nice, like, three-quarter uh, look on the under. Like, trying to sculpt this from scratch, guys, believe me, I've tried it, and it's it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> so it's very, very difficult to do. Um, but thankfully, with this new, new tool, you're going to be able to do it uh, very, very nicely. Now, the other tool that I want to show you, and we already saw a little bit of it yesterday, but it's the, I know, actually, we didn't see it yesterday, so that's why I want to show you right now, is the uh, interpolate uh, interpolate curves. So the way this works is very, very easy. Right now, I don't have my Wacom tablet here. I actually moved it to my house so that I could do a little bit of work over there. Um, so if you, like, draw something here, let's say I want to draw, like, uh, let's say I want to, like, like, some, like, weird, like, runes or something. So I'm going to start with, like, a very weird thing over here like this and then we're gonna go like here and then we're gonna have like one just like a simple line like this so now we can go to i believe this stroke interpolate and if we interpolate you're gonna see that we get this like uh interpolation it's gonna it's gonna try and create what needs to happen for me to go from this line all the way to this line over here and the cool thing about that one is that we can change let me let me dock this to the side we can change how many things we want. So maybe we only want like four interpolations and we interpolate and we're only gonna have those four like squiggly lines. So um, not only that, I believe there's, uh, I need to look for it, but there's another, there's a new one which is uh, like, uh, it, it's with the stager. It's with the stager, So, but the stager is something that I don't think we've talked about this one. Uh, where is it? Where do we have the stager? I, I think I'll cover that one on the, there we go, here it is, the stager. So uh, what I can do is, and this is pretty cool as well. Let me see if it works the way I kind of want this to work. So let me, let me go back with the coin there. Let's do a quick pass relief. There we go, just have something, right? Um, oh, by the way, if you want to fix this, which is uh, super horrible, uh, we need to do you the um, the mirror and weld. Super simple. I'm just gonna go to deformation and I'm gonna mirror this object so that it's on the other side like that. And then I'm gonna go into geometry. 
uh, modified topology mirror the weld. However, as you can see here, it's doing it like on the other side. So I need to select this local symmetry and mirror the weld so that we get it uh, right where it needs to be. Uh, it's a little bit weird here. So let me, I mean, we can also like just bring it to like the world position. There we go. So probably a little bit more. Let's try no local symmetry. Oh, that's weird. Sorry, I'm not thinking clearly right now, but yeah, I mean, we, we can just like duplicate to the other side. Let me show you the, the tool that I actually want to show you, and then we'll come back to this one. So I'm going to append a whatever, just like a like a sphere. And let's, oh, let's go to the sphere. And let's scale the sphere. Like here. Let's say this coin has like uh, like this rivets on the on the border, right? So what I can do here, let me grab this one's right here. So only these two guys. There we go. So grab this here. I'm gonna move the pivot point to the center of the coin, and then I'm gonna go into the stager. So stager is, is like poses, so you can save the pose of the object. So I'm gonna say home stage, and then I'm gonna move this around like nine degrees. I'm gonna hit uh, target stage. And now I can interpolate. And as you can see, it's going to interpolate throughout the element. Now, unfortunately, this does not actually uh, follow the, sorry, the curvature of the object. Is it, it just goes like from point A from, uh, to point B. I was hoping it would go uh, to the other side. I mean, we could use like this, guys, and, and try to like a band curve this into like a, like into something, right? I mean, it could be possible to kind of like distort it or something. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, like the, the, the interpolate thing is going to be really, really cool. And we have the interpolate for the stager and we have the interpolate for the, um, what's the word for brushes as well. So yeah, that's something that we'll, we'll see, uh, in another, in another time, I think. Now let me go back to my coin right here. And again, yesterday, uh, I think I did show you the new, like a knife curves, knife lasso. So the knife curve, for instance, uh, we can just like position this here. And if we want this coin to to have like a like a circle going through it. What's the most close to the of the mesh? In order? Okay, yeah, that's fine. So we're, we'll do this. Oop, there we go. So now we can bite a, a piece from the coin. So again, if we want to kill like a very specific coin, this is gonna make it so so much easier. So knife cuts, um, the the bas relief brushes, and uh, a little bit of the of the stager and the poser. We'll take a closer look at this, guys. I think we're going to be using them in the Lighthouse, actually, in the Lighthouse uh, tutorial that we're still working on. So, yeah, just stay tuned, guys. I, again, I'm, I apologize if uh, the videos are not, like, as long as we're what we're used to. Um, the conditions over here are a little, little bit tricky right now, so that's why I, I can't... Um, um, give it that, that much time right now, but don't worry tomorrow and and Saturday I will make sure to have enough time to show you guys or to have our portfolio reviews Which by the way, we've had several great uh, Submissions so far like I'm already seeing a lot of names up there. We're gonna use the same dynamic I'm gonna try to get half of you guys on Saturday and the other half on, on Sunday and uh, If you haven't submitted yet and you want to submit today's the last day So just check down the comments here or not the comments the description of the video and There's gonna be a link for a Google Drive folder go there create a folder with your name leave me a little message if you want to and drop whatever you want me to review it could be your your art station uh, portfolio it could be like specific tools like c tools or, or maya files um even blender files i think i could I, I could be able to open them so yeah anything that you want you guys want me to check out i'll be happy to do so and that's it for today thank you very much i'll see you tomorrow bye bye guys